What's up everyone? Dem boys back at it. This is gonna be something you gotta watch, alright? I don't say that every time I put out a video, but this better get as many views as the original 3-4 Blitz. Because if you're running 3-4, especially that Blitz scheme, you need to see this. Um, otherwise, eventually, people will start to get you out of it, and then you're gonna be like, Well, you know, Dem boys gave me this scheme and it worked alright, but then against better players, I ah, don't, don't want to fucking hear it. <laughs> Not that anyone's ever said that, I could just, that's where my mind would go. Uh, so, this is pro tips, this is going to bring the whole scheme together. I've got six bulletin points that we're going to cover. The first two are going to tie into each other. Uh, I gave you guys ways to send, and then I'm just going to sprinkle in some good stuff. I gave you guys ways to send five, six, seven, eight. I didn't really talk about four. So what I've set out to do was figure out how we can get some decent shed sending four in the three, four odd. Um, and then I wanted that setup to be able to be mirrored where I could send seven so now an opponent can't necessarily tell is four, seven, you know, what's coming at me, maybe three, right? Uh, if you're in the cover four or something. So first I'll show you how I would prefer to do this if I'm going to stay in man. Since we're sending less, I'm going to want some more help out there. I don't just want zero man, you know, across the board. That's why I'm in the cover one hole, but you could do the cover one blitz and then hot route people, you know, doesn't matter. So for this setup, very simple, very simple. We're going to pinch our D line. We're going to contain. As always, I'm, I'm going to press. Here you go. So what I would do is I would take A, and I'm going to get him on a curl flat. Maybe it's a hard flat if that's what and where I need the help. Maybe it's a cloud flat if that's where I need the help. This would just be a generic way to do this. Then you have a few options. If I'm worried about him hitting me deep over the middle, I could go ahead and use this running back, or the guy covering the running back, because keep in mind, odds are, if you've been blitzing him heavy, that running back is going to stay in blocking. Uh, so you could do something like that. Heck, if you need, you could do, you know, it doesn't matter. You move him over, he'll do it to the side of the field. It just depends on what side of the center they're on, FYI, to which way they'll go. Um, so this guy, if I wanted, I could put him on a purple over here. It's just whatever side of the center they're on. So. I don't know if that's something y'all knew about, but sprinkle that in. Um, and then, yeah, the running back's being blocked. So what I'm going to do, we'll sit down in these A-gaps here. You want to have yourself at least one A-gap you want covered, because what we want to have is we want to get this guy double teamed. So we can, because again, we're sending four at five. So we want this guy double teamed, because he's not really a pass rushing threat. Right, so that's where we're going to kind of try to jumble the line up in the middle. Uh, and, you know, we'll see if it works. Uh, you'll see where you can get the opportunity for Shad. So you got single coverage on both of your edge, uh, edge rushes. And the edge rusher on the, the left side of the screen even had a really good angle, right? If he was any, uh, if this guy was any good at pass rushing, he could have easily got some Shad there. Uh, again, you'll see the in-game footage also if you think D. Croft is using that for no good reason, you're crazy. Uh, so let me show you now, if you're in a cover four, I would just blitz X or B. And then maybe if I'm worried about that being covered, you know, there you go. Now you got a cover four, just one guy in the middle, but you're sending an extra rusher. That would be a way to do this. Um, so now let me quick show you how you're going to go ahead and do this for seven seven. So again, we're going to go ahead and pinch. We're going to blitz all linebackers. We're going to contain. And then much as we've done before, we're going to slant our point of attack left. So you see what I've done in the middle? We've got our crisscrossers there, our middle linebackers crisscross them again, uh, which is really what we want. We want dual stunts, and then we want our edge rush. So this is really going to work more or less the same way as our standard setup, guys. Uh, you could probably switch to this as your primary. Uh, I would mix them up a bit. But again, it's nice because we have a real effective way to, to send any a number we want and really get a quick rush in there. So again, you see the way we create that stunt, the middle linebacker flies right through. If they pick up the middle linebacker, one of the edge guys is going to fly right through. right? So that's important to know. So now I want to talk about numbers games and sending manual blitzes. All right. Um, 
doesn't matter if you're in man or zone. There's a way to do this any which way you want. So if I just go ahead and set up our blitz like I normally would. Now, if I notice a Max Pro, so what I'll, I'll really what I'm doing more often than not, pretty much every play, is I'm sitting here and I'm watching the tight end and the running back because I want to know, does he have extra blockers in? If I see both of them stay in, I'm just going to rush myself right away. Because now, again, they're blocking seven. You're sending seven? Well, guess what? Now I'm sending eight. I maintain that numbers advantage. With the design of that blitz setup, the extra person you're sending won't get jammed up. It won't jam everything up and jumble up. You will still maintain a free runner. All right. Again, the blitz setup that just keeps giving. <laughs> you can continue to send people, and it will continue to let them run free. A lot of times, you'll actually be the person who shoots through completely free. It just depends how they set up their blocking um, and what formation and X, Y, 20 different Zs, right? Um, another way you could do this, say there I'm in a zone. And now this, for this, I basically got to know, I mean, they really haven't sent out their running back. I'm pretty sure I would bring Woods down here and go ahead and blitz him. Um, now, it's not the end of the world if they do run like a swing pass, as long as the quarter doesn't miss his tackle. That deep quarter, since it's pressed, will peel back down to the running back. Um, but still, you know, so now they're in the Max Pro. <laughs> he fell. So, <laughs> so 53 fell down, and then, and then the safety ran over him and fell. That's funny. You'll see the in-game footage. That... that just a glitch. That's a glitch. That doesn't really happen in real life. You guys aren't usually just falling down and tripping over each other. Um, that's why I said we'll see the in-game footage anyways. Um, what else do we got? What else do we got? We're halfway through, guys. we got some fire still to come, so stay tuned. More wide rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So something that I have noticed is sometimes you get guys who maybe they've got a really good offensive line and they're doing an okay job picking this up. What you can do is move one of your rushers wide, or both rushers wide. Uh, maybe they've got a mobile quarterback and they're rolling out to one side or both sides. You could put one guy wide, two guys wide. You get the idea. Uh, and what we want to happen is we just want him to have a straight angled shot at the quarterback. So you see the running back did not pick him up. The running back just dumbed out, didn't pick him up because he was so wide, the running back just never really saw him coming. So that is another way where you can kind of glitch out the blocking. We'll keep it moving nice and quick. Integrate the run D into the blitz. Um, so I showed you guys the whole, if you haven't seen it, you know, whatever. This basic setup. Uh, and then I talked to you guys about depending on what they're in, you can pinch your line and contain, you know, you can do whatever you need to with the line. Uh, we really just kind of wanted to highlight the spy and then obviously the purple uh, for the stretch so you can go ahead and integrate this all in so and send everybody like so so now what I would do two different things and this kind of depends on your user skill level what you think's coming um, if I think there's a wheel route I would just go and user that if I'm in man uh, and you know whatever this would be what we would do you know you could send your spy too if you wanted at that point right away. A second you realize it's a pass, you could click on and send the spy uh, as well. So that's just a way where you can really integrate the pass D and the run D together. Now, again, depending on how you want to set these guys up, it really doesn't matter. The other thing I would do is if maybe I'm worried that the running back or the tight end might go out on routes, what I would do is I would use the weak side linebacker. Odds are one of them's in blocking. Very few people are going to be, you know, only blocking five when you've been lighting them up the way you have. So that's how you can kind of hedge your bets if you're wrong. So, okay, you know, and we're going to go cover him. Whatever. So that is a way to integrate the Rundy into the Blitz. So if you do feel like maybe so they're doing something where you need to have this guy shooting gaps because there's a stretch coming. You could do like this. So if people are in two run, 
two wide run sets, I will typically pinch my line and contain. If people are in one wide run sets, I will typically spread my line, pinch, contain. So that's kind of how I would just as a general rule of thumb handle one wide versus two wide. Uh, now, this is going to be some funny in-game footage on this one. So this is how you're going to handle if somebody is uh, motion blocking at the last second to give your blitz issues. So for example, someone comes in and they're going to go ahead and you know at the last second motion be in and then snap the ball to get that extra blocking on you. There's a few ways you can handle that, all right? Depending on zone, man, what, we'll get through it. So what you're going to see me doing in the in-game footage is actually pre-snap, I'm just bringing up my secondary icons, and the second I see Slate move, B blitz, right? So you just quickly react. Now, that having been said, this is something that's very much worth noting the way the mechanics of this game work. Uh, watch the man defender that's supposed to be on Slayton when he realizes he doesn't have to cover him. Oh, look at that. He goes and covers the open tight end and takes that away. The man logic in this game, they will pick up a route next to them. It may not be quite as clean, right? They're definitely not going to get the press, etc., etc., as you saw there. And that's why my preferred methodology is to bring up that, and then, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and tell him to blitz. And then I'll go cover the tight end. Okay, so that's another way we can win versus motion blocking. Uh, and that doesn't matter. In zone, same thing, right? Don't matter. You're just telling that guy to blitz to get extra blocking in. Alright everyone, so that's going to be it for that portion. Let's move on to the next portion here. I'm going to go ahead and kick some in-game footage your way, which I will narrate um, and just kind of break down and explain it as you see it happening in-game, uh, as well as show you a nice like inside zone shotgun run type of a, uh, uh, well, you'll blow it up <laughs> type of a run D. So we'll get that in for a bonus seven thing. Uh, let's check it out. So we're going to start with the inside zone rush D. You'll notice all I did was just move my outside rusher opposite the running back out wide. Uh, and I had spread my line, spread my linebackers, blitz all contain. Uh, so this is just going to be the wide rush. Uh, during the pass, I had told you from time to time uh, against Gun Bunch. This was a good example of it kind of glitching off the running back. Um, and him just blowing his blocking assignment entirely. So I didn't have a numbers advantage, but I still gained a free runner. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but it does seem to happen against bunch-type formations more than anything. Uh, this is just going to be an example of the quarterback seeing that wide rush out to the wide side of the field, of course, not where I don't want him to go. He runs the other way and, you know, gets himself in trouble. So this is just going to be a mix-up of that run D and maintaining our blitz. Now remember I told you, typically I pinch if they're too wide, um, and I spread them wide if they're in one wide. That is a good rule of thumb. Um, but it depends what they're doing, what types of runs they're doing. So the first one you see, the, the spy blows it up. The second one you just see how, how well the fits are covered. Uh, now this is going to be the four-man rush. Uh, that was just another little chunk of the run defense again. Uh, now this will be the four-man rush. So again, you know, the where I have the extra rusher, the fourth rusher that's not in the bunch, uh, that's going to be the guy who's likely to get the shed. So just keep in mind, uh, whatever side you want the pressure to come in on, that'd be the side to go ahead and send the guy. See, like there, I didn't want him to roll that way. There it is. Um, you may still need to spy. So this is obviously in squads, but I just set it up with a spy. So instead of sending five, I sent four and the spy. And you see how the shed, that time I'd set up the shed to the wide side of the field. So he couldn't get out and take off that way. 
Um, next, we're going to talk about the user rush. So what I'm doing is, again, just counting essentially blockers, right? So I'm going to watch the inside tight end and the running back. If they stay in, I blitz. So they stay in, I blitz, we still get a free runner in right away. Um, here, it's a little bit tougher to do it because there's a running back on either side, so you kind of got to stand in the middle to hedge your bets, right? I can't cheat on one side or the other, so you'll notice I kind of roll down into the gap. Uh, I like doing that as opposed to running right up the middle. Sometimes you'll just kind of get caught up and you're not going to get the effect you're looking for. So I do recommend kind of rolling over like that. Um, this is going to be where the guy was trying to motion block me. Uh, and so you'll notice I have my secondary icons up, waiting to see which receiver motions. As soon as I see it's B's guy who motions, I tell B to blitz. And there you go, we've maintained a numbers advantage. Uh, I actually got a safety doing that against the guy in the game. Uh, Xbox clips just kind of screwed up. I was hoping to show you that, but... Anywho, guys, I already know this was helpful. I really, really appreciate the support. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this if you're running the 3-4 Blitz defense because it is important to me that you run it as well as possible and have the best experience with it possible. Uh, otherwise, I haven't done my job. So, damn boys, if y'all got any questions, drop them in the comments. Otherwise, like, comment, and y'all already know, most importantly, subscribe. We're on that road to 1,000. We're making great progress. Peace.